Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I'll show you how you can create Excel template to upload multiple purchase order lines right from within purchase order form in Dynamics 365 Supply Chain Management. Let's take a look at the list of all the purchase orders. In the top right corner, we see a menu called Open in Microsoft Office. That menu existed for quite a while, and when we click on it, we'll see there are two groups of menu items. The first one is called Export to Excel, and the second group is called Open in Excel, and those templates would allow us not to only upload the information from D365, but also create or update records in Excel and then publish those changes back to Dynamics 365. But when we look at the two items available here, we see that both templates created by Microsoft would only allow us to work with purchase order headers. There is no option to do the purchase order lines here, which is what we want to do. On opposite side, for the sales orders, there is such a template. So if we click on the sales orders and then select this sales order header and lines template and click on download, we will see a blank template that Microsoft created for us that allows us to not only populate sales order header fields, but also sales order lines. And this is what we will create, but now for the purchase orders. So the first thing we'll need to do is navigate to Organization Administration module, Setup, Office Integration, and then click on Excel Workbook Designer. This form shows all the templates that have been created by Microsoft, including Excel and Word templates. Each of those templates has at least one or multiple data entities. And what we will do now is we will create a brand new workbook. So we're going to click on Create Blank Workbook and then click on Download. And that's where we see a blank Excel file created for us. But in order for us to design a proper template, we need to open it in Excel desktop application. So we're going to click on Download File and then click on Open File. So here's our blank Excel. We're going to click on Enable Editing. And that's when the Microsoft Dynamics pane will show up on the right-hand side. At this point in time, you may be asked to authenticate yourself. So you have to use email address and password that you use to log into Dynamics 365 instance. I've already done that, so there is no prompt for me here. So let's start the designing. Click on Design here on the bottom. And that's where we will see several options presented to us. First of all is Add Table, Add Fields and Labels. And we see right now we have no data sources. So let's add a first data source. And selection of the first data source is quite important because that's what will determine a root data entity for this template. And the root data entity will be used by the system to decide from which form within Dynamics 365 this template can be opened. So we will use first Add Fields function. Click on Add Fields. And in here, from the drop-down, we can select from the list of available data entities, and there are quite a few. Or instead, we can select from one of the recently used data entities. In this case, I will select Purchase Order Header V2 Data Entity right here. This data entity got populated in the drop-down, and then I will click on Next. Here I see the list of available fields and two buttons, Add Label and Add Value. Let's select a cell A3 right here. And let's select the purchase order number field and then let's click on add label. Then select the second cell B3 and then click on add value. You're going to get this warning message saying that the data refresh will be required. We would like to continue. Yes. So what we've done here is we have populated two cells. One was populated with a label for the purchase order number which says purchase order. And this cell got populated with the purchase order number value itself or a placeholder for it. From this point on, we're going to do it for other fields as well. So let's select A4 here, select Vendor Account field, Add Label, select B4, Add Value, and so on. Here I have selected seven fields from Purchase Order Header Data Entity and I have added them to our template. Now I can do some editing. I can, for example, select these label fields and I can color them some color right here to make it a bit more user-friendly. I can also select cell a1 and maybe type a heading. I can make a font a bit bigger. And let's say I'm quite happy with the way my purchase order header looks like. The next thing I'll do is click on Done. And now I see that I have one data source for my template and it is Purchase Order Header V2. From this point on, I need to add Purchase Order Line Data Entity. But the way to do that will be by clicking on those two plus signs which say Add Related Table. I'm going to click on that 
And in this drop down, I'll see all the data entities that are linked or related to purchase order header. And of course, I will see purchase order lines v2 data entity, and that's the one I will use here. I will select it and click on next. So there is a different way to add fields here. So I'll see two panes here, available fields and selected fields. And all I have to do is just select a cell to which I would like to add my first field, let's say C14. Then I have to select the line number, so the available field, and then either double click on it or click on add. And once I do that, it will move it to selected fields. We don't see them yet here on our template, so we have to just keep on going and add the next field, for example, item number. Select item number and then click on add and so on. Once I have added all the fields, I can then rearrange them. For example, if I would like to move the matching policy all the way to the end, I will just select that field and then click on down. So it's going to be at the end of my list. Once I'm happy with the field selection and the order, I will click on done. And that's when I'll see all my purchase order lines populated right here. And the last thing I'll do here is I'll add a total for the order. So that will be a calculated field. So I will just type in the label for it, fill it. And then here I'll send a simple formula of sum on table one, which is my purchase order line table. And the field name will be net amount. Close brackets, close brackets, and click on enter. So this field will show me a total of all my net amounts column right here. Then I'm going to click on done and I'm going to save my template right here. So the template name is Dynamics Workbook. Once I'm happy with this template, I will just close it and come back to Dynamics. The second menu item that we'll have to use now is called Document Templates. This shows all the standard templates that Microsoft created for us. We can then upload our own. We will click on new button right here. We're going to click on browse. We're going to select that template that we just created. And that's when we're going to see the data entity that was selected as the root data entity. And in this case, it is purchase order header. It's quite important if we want to see that template in the purchase order form, the root data entity for that template should be purchase order header. If you don't see your data entity in the purchase order form, then you probably have selected or created a template so that the purchase order lines data entity is the root data entity. Then we're just going to give a user-friendly name. Let's call it PO header and lines, for example, and then click on OK. Now we're going to find that template. Here it is. We have to make sure that the list in open in office menu is selected to yes, so that will make that template visible in this menu right here. And we also have to make sure that apply filter on the current record and apply a company filter checkboxes are also both checked. With that being said, let's go back to our purchase order form. Let's find purchase order, for example, this open purchase order 14. Let's just take a look at it. It has two lines right here. And let's click in the top right corner on open in Microsoft Office. And that's when we're going to see our purchase order and lines template that we just created. We will select it, click on download. That's where we're going to see an empty template. But in order for us to populate it, we have to do it in Excel desktop application. So download the file and let's open it. So here's our template right here. Click on enable editing. And that's when the system will refresh this template with the values from the purchase order that we have selected. And here we see our vendor account, vendor name, address, the status of that PO, the currency, the company from which it came from, and the current total of 979. What we're going to do now is add a third line just to test if that template would allow us to publish. We're going to type in third line. The item will be 100. The quantity will be, let's say, 5. Unit price will be five as well. The net amount, I can do it myself or I can leave it blank and let the system to cal calculate it. Site will be one, warehouse 11, location 11, and let's say my taxes and matching policies are the same. Once I'm happy with that, I will have to do one more change to make it all happen here. In here under purchase order, I see a cell that is formatted as the number. That's why our deleting zeros are cut out. And that would prevent us from successfully publishing this PO changes back to Dynamics 365. So what I have to do is just change the formatting. So I will click, right click on that cell, click on format cell, 
and then change the formatting from general to text right here. That's when I will see a proper number populated for the purchase order. With that in place, I will now click on publish. Now we have one error encountered. Let's take a closer look. I will click on this flag right here and we see that the item 100 does not exist. All right, so I have selected the wrong number. Maybe item 1000 exists. As you can see, there's a data validation happening here, which is great. So you will not be able to create invalid records inside D365. All the values will be validated before they're published. And publish again. Here we have an error again. Let's take a look at it. Inventory dimension location is inactive and may consequently not be specified. All right, so we have selected an invalid inventory location. So what I'm going to do is just going to clear the location value right here and try to publish again. All right, so we have successfully published our changes. Let's just go back to Dynamics 365 and validate. Here's our purchase order. I'm just going to refresh it. And here I see a brand new line for item 1000, which is a Surface Pro Warehouse 11. Quantity is 5, unit price is 5, and we can see that the net amount was correctly calculated as 25. So here is an example of how we created a PO line from Excel using a template that we just created ourselves. And of course, the same principle would apply to anywhere as long as you know which data entity you need to select to populate specific form in Dynamics 365, you would be able to do exact same thing as I've done here for a purchase order. So I hope you find that video useful. Until the next time, take care.